to D W. Good morning everyone, welcome to our service of Holy Eucharist here at St Helen's Church in the parish of Solihull and welcome to all who are following this service and taking part online. And so we meet in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We hear our first hymn. So we remember Jesus promised that whenever two or three are gathered together in his name, there he is in their midst. Jesus is here with us this morning. And so let's open our hearts and lives to him as we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the words of comfort our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed 
and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. <coughs> Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand as we worship God in the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the Collect Prayer for today, the second Sunday after Trinity. Faithful Creator, whose mercy never fails, deepen our faithfulness to you and to your living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please sit for our first Bible reading. The reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So, if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Jenny. Please stand for the Gospel reading. So hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground, and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? 
It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Do please be seated. And let's bow our head to pray. Dear Lord, you have so much to teach us and we so much to learn. Please open our minds and our hearts to your living word, that in the written word we might meet Jesus, who is the living word. Amen. Well, Paul Smith was scheduled to be preaching this morning, but because um, Jennifer is still uh, recovering from her hip surgery, um, he's, he's caring for, for Jennifer. So uh, let's remember to pray for Paul and uh, Jennifer this morning. Um, so you've got me. So, did you vote in the elections a few weeks ago for the West Midlands Mayor? All the candidates put forward their manifesto explaining how much better things would be if they were in charge. And Jesus had his manifesto too and calls for us to vote for him and pledge our allegiance to him. His manifesto is that the kingdom of God is coming. Not just one day in the future, but it is near in the coming of himself. And it is within, as we know him in our hearts and lives. So what would it be like if the kingdom of God came to Soli Hall? The police would have nothing to do. Everyone would be safe. Everyone would be happy and no one in need because we'd all be caring for our neighbours. No litter. Churches packed to standing room only. And what if all those leaders enjoying their barbecues and beaches at the G7 decided to implement the values of God's kingdom for our world? Decisive action and not just talk on climate change. Vaccines for everybody and the ending of poverty and injustice. We pray hopefully regularly in the Lord's Prayer. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not just take us to heaven, but Lord, make it all happen here. So how is it going to happen? Is it just a pipe dream? Jesus says, have a look at seeds. They're small. They're often scruffy, hard, colourless even, very, very unpromising. And yet they have huge potential. And Jesus sees the potential of the kingdom in you and in me. Although we may feel small and insignificant, he sees our potential and if we only let him, things will happen. The kingdom is coming, not through violent force or by people buying it through wealth, it's growing silently, says Jesus. Sometimes it's hidden. It's mysterious, growing like a seed. Like the farmer in that parable. He throws some seeds, everything grows. He hasn't a clue how it happens. And in the fullness of time, the harvest will come. Jesus grew up in a small, obscure village with a bad reputation. He lived in a small country. And yet, in a few years, he has had amazing impact. Throughout history, the impact of his life and death and his resurrection carries on. Not just in more and more churches everywhere in the world, but schools and hospitals founded in his name, charities, good works, even football teams had their beginnings in the Christian faith. So we mustn't be discouraged 
by the apparent smallness of our efforts, the weakness of the church, as there are only a few of us here this morning. The kingdom is coming. Its growth is as sure as the growth of a seed. Now when you're talking to children, never ask them a question which you are depending on one particular word as the answer, because you'll get everything but. I was once doing an assembly in school, and uh, I asked, what do seeds need to grow? Well, we could have been there all morning, because we had water, light, soil, and uh, eventually one child said, time, time. And I thought it was a really good answer. We need to give the kingdom time. We need to be patient with God and his work in our lives. I planted a tray of seeds about seven or eight weeks ago and I'd almost given up on them and last week some green shoots were at last coming through. Now you know that seeds don't grow if you leave them in the packet. The kingdom of God needs our cooperation and participation. You might know the story of the new curate visiting the parish for the first time, wandering round And he saw a chap working in his front garden. And the new curate decided to draw this man into conversation. and Maybe even get him to come to church. So the curate leaned over the fence as the chap bent over uh, pulling the weeds. And the curate says, isn't it wonderful what the good Lord provides for us? As he looked at all the flowers and the veg. Well, the man straightened his back and paused from his weeding. He wiped his brow and replied to the curate, Yes, it is wonderful, but you should have seen it when the good Lord had it to himself. (laughs) In the letter to the Corinthians, Paul says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. We need to cooperate with God to plant those good seeds to water our spiritual lives and those around us and God in time will give the growth the kingdom of God says Jesus is like a tiny tiny mustard seed growing into a great shrub I think we've got a picture I hope of a mustard shrub there it is impressive Not really. Jesus must have said it with a bit of a twinkle in his eye. It's a bit scruffy actually, I think. A bit weed-like, a bit invasive. Jesus said it with irony, I'm sure. He might have said the kingdom of God is like a cedar of Lebanon. Something really impressive. Or if he was here this morning, he might have said the kingdom of God is like a small acorn from which a mighty oak grows. But now he says he uses this scruffy, invasive mustard bush. It's growing in very, very unpromising soil, soil, in hard conditions, and it's growing from a tiny speck of a seed. And that picture of a less than tidy mustard shrub means that there's a place in the kingdom and in the church for people whose lives are less than tidy, whose lives are struggling in difficult soil. And the church is not necessarily swish, has got everything together. It's a bit untidy and tangled at times, like this mustard shrub. It reminds you of a church in Plymouth, which has the words of a poem inscribed into its front door. And the poem is called A People Place by William J. Crocker. And it goes like this. If this is not a place where tears are understood, where do I go to cry? If this is not a place where my spirits can take wing, where do I go to fly? If this is not a place where my questions can be asked, where do I go to seek? If this is not a place where my feelings can be heard, where do I go to speak? If this is not a place where you will accept me as I am, Where can I go to be? If this is not a place where I can try to learn and grow, where can I be just me? The mustard shrub is a picture of a place where there's room for all. 
Jesus says its branches are large and birds can make their nests. May our church be like that. I love the poster which says, God wants spiritual fruit, not religious nuts. So as we receive Jesus Christ afresh this morning, may his presence sink deep into our lives like a tiny seed. And so may we become fruitful Christians, caring and fragrant people, and not people who hurt and sting others like thistles and nettles. May we take even those small and insig insignificant actions which one day will reap a great harvest. May our church be like this mustard shrub, not always glossy and swish, not always getting everything right, but spreading and making room for many more. May your kingdom come on earth as in heaven. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, plant a seed of faith and let it grow in me to bear a harvest shown by deeds of lasting quality. Grant me a gentle, humble heart where love alone holds sway till selfless servanthood becomes my habit day by day. Give me a deeper, richer hope, a vision sure and clear to strengthen me until the day when you at last appear. I have no faith but what you give. Your love has made me new. My hope is found in no one else. Lord, give me more of you. Amen. So would you please stand and as we renew our faith in the growth of the kingdom of God in the words of the creed. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now do please be seated as Chris leads our prayers of intercession. Lord God, Almighty, rule in our hearts, direct our decisions, Please guide our actions. Let your kingdom grow in us. May we live and work for your praise and glory. We pray and we thank you for the growth of faith in our lives and in the lives of your church. May lives be transformed by your word, your love and your spirit in our lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, we pray for our world. May governments of all countries in our world work together to make your vision for humanity a reality. May those in position of leadership seek for peace and harmony, offering support to one another. We pray for the G7 commitments to make the vaccines for COVID more widely and fairly available for all. Also, as today, they will agree measures to reduce CO2 emissions, to reduce the effect of global warming. Lord, we thank you for the beauty and abundance of your creation on this lovely uh, summer's morning, for all that we are able to enjoy. Help us, Lord, to be good stewards of your resources and help us to make wise, sustainable choices that future generations may be able to enjoy all that we have that you have so richly provided. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously Lord. hear us. We pray for your church, both in this country and throughout the world. We pray for the mission of the church 
to make Christ's love and his gift of salvation, freedom and forgiveness known to all. We thank you for the seed sown through your word and pray that we may see the resultant growth that you alone can bring. We pray for this parish of Solihull, especially for those who lead us and who tell of your kingdom and who minister to us. Remembering especially Simon, Roger, Sue, Paul. And we continue to pray for Helen and her family for your healing and wholeness. May all leaders know your guiding hand and empower them by your spirit. Give to them clear vision of where you are seeking to lead us. Will we pray for guidance uh, for uh, the event we're planning for Welcome Back Sunday on the 30th of June when we hope to have congregation neighbours and Wednesday lunches coming together. Just pray that we may be able to take place, that take place with um, safe, safety in mind. We pray too for wisdom for those who are putting together the parish profile for the appointment of a new rector and also for the team review that's going to take place. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord grace to hear us. We pray for all those in need, for those who feel worried, maybe they feel trapped within their own homes, for the lonely and for those suffering mental anxiety. We continue to ask for all our young people, for your protection and for those whose education has been seriously affected by the restrictions applied because of Covid. May they know your loving presence and peace. Lord, we remember all who suffer in body, mind and spirit, for those still suffering in hospital and for those awaiting important surgical operations. We in a moment of quiet remember any known to us who need our prayers, asking for your peace and presence in healing to fill their lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We remember all those who have lost family and friends at this time and who mourn their loss, particularly remembering David Ratcliffe this morning. Lord, please bring them your comfort, your peace and your hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Close with a prayer from Alan Gaunt. Lord, fill us with your love, so that we may speak to you, we may gladly speak for you, work for you, and live our whole lives for you, until all the nations of the earth join with us in your endless praise. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Chris, would you now please stand as we come to share Christ's peace? Blessed are the peacemakers, they shall be called children of God. We meet in the name of Christ and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And you. So from our places, offer one another a gesture of peace. like to sit as we hear our offertory hymn.
Wise and gracious God, you spread a table before us. Nourish your people with the word of life and the bread of heaven. Amen. Would you please stand for the Eucharistic prayer. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. 
he opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death, and celebrate his rising in glory. Send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Do please be seated as we continue in prayer. Let us pray for the coming of God's kingdom in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. <coughs> For those participating at home, it may feel strange to be invited to communion, not through the physical bread and wine we can touch, but in a spiritual communion with God who always comes to meet us wherever we are. There are no special words or prayers for this. All the church has ever thought necessary is true desire, lively faith and genuine love. So come honestly before God the way you know how. You may like to pray quietly using this prayer to help you. Lord, you stand at the door of my heart and knock you wait for me and only I can let you in. I believe and trust in you and ask you now to fill me with your presence. Feed me with your body and unite me in your blood that I may be your blessing to a world in need. Amen.
Would you please stand as we prepare to receive the body of Christ? If it's not your uh, practice to receive, uh, please keep your hands clasped together and then I'll know to give you a blessing. The body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you for feeding us at the supper of your Son. Sustain us with your Spirit, that we may serve you here on earth until our joy is complete in heaven and we share in the eternal banquet with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together. Lord, we have broken your bread and received your life. By the power of your Spirit, keep us always in your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Do we have any notices at this point? Thank you for all who have helped to put this service together. We hear our final hymn. Yeah. 
for the blessing. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with you all and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.